Hello, and welcome to Artistic PCB Design for Terrified Beginners. I'm Clement, and I do electronics for a living and also for fun. And I like cats, and I sometimes hang out at hacker events and teach workshops where I teach people to build things. And today you are these people. So this is me, and this is one of my boards, and this is our cat, <coughs> who we'll be seeing more of later. So I'm, I'm targeting mainly two groups of people. I want to get them talking to each other. I'm targeting artists who want to use circuit boards as a medium, and I'm targeting circuit board people who want pretty boards. So the idea here is to get these two groups of people to speak a common language, so that artists and designers who are designing things for this medium know what is possible and know what they need to do to prepare their work so it's useful for PCB designers. And PCB designers know how to deal with those weird graphics things that designers and artists like to draw at them. And of course, you don't need to be in either of these groups if you just want to make something cool and have fun. This is great too. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what print circuit boards are, and then we're going to look at what they're made of and what we can do with each of the elements that circuit boards are made of. And then we're going to take a really simple bit of electronics, pretty much the simplest thing you can have. And then we're going to turn it into something that is visually much more complex than it is electronically. And then we're going to do the same thing again using a different method. And then you're going to have a try for yourself. And I'm going to be there to help you out. So circuit boards, printed circuit boards, PCBs. I'm sure you've seen some of these before. These are some of mine. You may have seen these particular ones before, in fact. So let's look at what they're made of. So your default printed circuit board has a fiberglass core. Now this is what it looks like from above, and this is what it looks like from the side. So you have a thin sheet of fiberglass, and usually it's 1.6 millimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. You have to figure it out. Uh, so yeah, usually your board thickness is 1.6 millimeters. You can have a different thickness. You just need to tell your manufacturer that. So your fiberglass is covered in copper on both sides. So you have a really thin film of copper. And uh, normally you don't see this copper surface because it's covered in other materials, but underneath the metallic bits on the PCB, they are copper. So then this copper has a pattern. And this pattern is very interesting to people who are actually making electronics work. But we're going to look at it as a way to get our circuit boards to look a particular way. So we have this copper pattern and the copper is covered in solder mask. Now solder mask is basically a kind of paint. It's a really thin film that covers the circuit board and it repels solder. Solder doesn't like to stick to solder mask. And traditionally it's green. So you've seen all these green PCBs everywhere. That's the default color, but it doesn't have to be green. Solder mask can be a number of colors. Each manufacturer will have a set of colors that they can use for solder masks. And you can choose between those. Then we have a pattern in the solder mask. And the pattern is just there are bits of the board that have no solder mask. And we define that when we design the board. We can define, okay, this bit should have no solder mask, that bit should have no solder mask. That's, that's how it is. Uh, then we have holes, and there are two types of holes on a board. So you have holes that are not connected to anything, like uh, this one here, that's, that just goes right through the board. Uh, but then you also have vias. Vias are a type of hole that has metal walls, and it's electrically connected to the top and bottom. So it can connect the top layer to the bottom layer. Then we have surface treatments. So every bit of exposed copper gets covered with a particular surface material. This is because if you leave copper exposed, it will oxidize very quickly and you won't be able to solder to it. So you have two main types of surface treatment. You have hot air solder leveling, HASL, HASL, and you have ENIC, which stands for Electroless Nickel Immersion Gold. So hot air solder leveling is you dip your entire board in solder. And then you use a jet of hot air to spray it off the surface so that the surface remains level. And you get all the exposed copper surface, the color of solder. And then Enig, all you need to know about Enig is the last bit, which is G for gold. So you get a really thin layer of gold that covers the surface of the board. 
So you get this gold surface everywhere where you have exposed copper. Everywhere where you have copper underneath and no mask on top. Now this, these are the two criteria. You need to have copper underneath, no mask on top. Like here, you have no copper underneath, you don't get gold. Here you do get gold because you have copper underneath and no mask on top. Then we have silk screen and silk screen it's not always made by a silk screen process but uh, it's basically just a, um, a sort of paint that's printed on top of the board it's printed on top of the solder mask so if you have a bit with no solder mask you don't get silk screen there either um, and then you uh, then you have milling and milling is not actually a part of the PCB it's a part of the PCB production process, so the board will get cut into a shape that you define. So let's let's look at those things in visual terms. So fiberglass is a sort of brown beige translucent thing. And when you have copper, you make it opaque. You have an opaque material that doesn't let light through. And then you have solder mask, which is just paint in a particular color. And you can choose what color you want out of uh, the set of colors that manufacturers have. And you choose among those. Uh, then you have your mask pattern, which is just no paint. So all the bits where you put no paint. Uh, that's your mask. So holes are holes. And um, the surface is where you get shiny bits. So if you have exposed copper somewhere, you get this surface treatment. You get this gold or tin colored, silver colored material. And then you have silk screen, and uh, silk screen is white paint basically, unless your solder mask color is very light. You can get like white solder mask, and then the silk screen on top will usually be black, so it's readable. But for most colors, your silk screen is going to be white. And then we have milling, which is just the shape that you want your board to have. And one thing we haven't talked about so far is parts. So you have components, you have electronic components that actually go on the board and get soldered on and they of course have a visual effect as well. So you can you can uh, use those visually or you can hide them. So let's let's look at these elements on an actual PCB. So we we don't have any exposed fiberglass here. You could kind of see the fiberglass cover uh, color between the actual boards. So we have uh, we have PCB with no solder mask, uh, with solder mask and no copper. Sorry. So solder mask, no copper. And then we have copper on top of that, and you can see patterns in the copper. These are traces, and there's a via. So that's a hole that's connected to the copper. There's more of those. Uh, here's a hole that's not connected to the copper. And then you have this gold area here, which is exposed copper. So you have a hole in the mask and you have copper underneath. So that's exposed copper. And the white lines, the white lines and text, they're your silk screen. So here is what a board looks like after it's been assembled. And you can see there's now solder on the pads that used to be gold. And some of them are completely covered, some of them are partially covered. And you have all those components on there. So what are the design elements that we can control? We can control the shape of the board. We can control the pattern that the copper has on both sides of the board. We can control where the components go. We can control where we have no solder mask, so where we have no paint. And we can control where the white paint goes and we can sort of control colors. So we can choose the surface treatment, we can choose whether we want gold, which costs a bit more money but also looks nicer on the hot air, or the hot air solder leveling, which is a much rougher surface but silver. So sometimes you want that silver effect. And you can choose the color of your solder mask. So let's look at a few things we can do with these design elements. We can do translucent areas with shadows by putting holes in the copper. We can do metallic shapes by um, making a pattern in the mask over a copper surface. We can do painted shapes using silk screen, which is usually less precise than your solder mask. 
and you can do shaped holes and you can do shapes in copper under the mask which are a subtle sort of change in contrast then you can use components as shapes themselves and you can shape the entire board now one thing you should know with uh, with shaped holes and with the shape of the board there's one thing you need to be aware of they're made with a milling bit and a milling bit is like a drill that can travel around so it's a circular thing that's rotating which means you cannot have sharp inside corners so like here um, you have the milling bit going around along this curve and it cannot make a sharp corner in here and similarly can't make sharp corners in here on the outside you can have sharp corners if you need them because you can uh, you can have the milling bit go like this and then like this and then you're left with a corner but on the inside of the board where you're making a cutout inside the board you cannot have sharp inside corners so here's an example of what we can make this is exposed fiberglass and I'm using it as a light diffuser so if you have a light behind there it will get nicely diffused inside here and then you have a really high contrast metallic text in here this text is made in hot air solder leveling process so this is exposed copper with solder on it and here's the silk screen by comparison and here's a cutout in the copper and also mask removed in the same place so you have a backlit board uh, so you have uh, fiberglass so you can also see if you have a backlit board how the traces actually look completely different where there is copper and where there isn't okay so here's something else we can do we can make patterns we can put like pictures in the mask layer and you get those in exposed copper here's again copper under the mask and here you have a combination of exposed copper and silk screen this this here is just an example of how boards can be any shape they don't need to be rectangular so this is a board that's designed to bend and this is the bendy bit here it's actually designed to bend you can uh, you can make shapes like this you can you can make any shape you want so here's another board where we're combining mask exposure and silk screen to get these sort of continuous lines that are changing color okay uh, this is the board I was showing you earlier and here I have cutouts in the copper and in the mask layer and uh, on the back of the board I have an LED a light emitting diode which illuminates in this direction this is the effect that you get when you look at it from the other side so I have these lines on the front uh, I have cutouts with lines in them on the front and the copper layer on the back I have complete cutouts in the copper and the mask layer and this is the effect so the board elements we have um, these are the things we control we control the board outline the shape of the board that's a vector image it's a path and then we have negative mask so like the bits where we want the mask removed and we're going to be exporting those as raster images and that shows up either as the surface treatment so that would be the gold or silver color or as the fiberglass that's underneath and that's depending on whether you have copper under the mask opening or not then you have silk screen and silk screen is a positive raster graphic and this is just where the silk screen goes and then we have polygons which define where the copper goes and we have polygons which keep copper out so we can make areas that are filled with copper and we can make other areas inside those that are excluded from the fill that have no copper now when we're working with vector graphics we can export those directly and that's easy but when we're working with photos when we're working with raster graphics with many colors we need to map them onto layers so we need each layer to be a binary image so you can't do transparent you can't do grayscale only thing you can do is like okay this bit has is present on this layer or it's not so we're going to separate our fiberglass areas we're going to separate our metallic areas into their own layers and we're going to export those we're going to do the same for silk screen and for silk screen you can use uh, you can use halftone to convert grayscale to binary or you can use thresholding and I'm going to show you both actually 
Uh, one thing you need to be aware of is if you use halftone too much, you will generate gigantic graphics. And gigantic graphics can crash your PCB manufacturer's website when you upload them. And yes, this has happened. So here's the design process. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to decide how big the board is going to be because that determines what resolution things are going to be exported at. Then we're going to draw the outline of the board, export that. Then we're going to create any graphical elements we have, export them. Then we're going to import those into our board design software and we're going to place components on the board and connect those components together. Then we'll make sure it looks nice and once we're happy we're going to export it so it can actually be manufactured. So there's type of software that if you're on the artist side of the divide you've not experienced before necessarily and that's electronics computer aided design ECAD, EDA, electronics design automation it has lots of names but uh, names don't matter as much. What we actually care about is what it does. So it deals with schematics it deals with layouts and it deals with Gerbers. So a schematic is kind of like a flowchart of what is connected to what. Uh, so what's on the board, uh, what components are on there, how are they connected to each other. Then you have layouts, which is what the board looks like. So this is where all your design elements are going to be, your traces, your footprints. Footprint is the copper equivalent of a component, so it's a bit where the component sits on. And we're going to have our artistic elements on there as well. And then the output is Gerber's. Gerber is a historical file format, which is still in use and it's great. And it's everything that the manufacturer of the board needs to know. So regardless what design software you're using, that's what's going to come out. And that's what all the manufacturers understand. So here's the tools that we'll be using. We'll be using Inkscape for vector graphics and for converting vector graphics to other formats. We'll be using Krita for raster and vector graphics for half tones and for separating layers of different colors. And if you want to use another graphics program, if you want to use GIMP or Photoshop or PaintShop Pro, whatever you like, that's fine. But you have to figure out where the equivalent things are by yourself. This is what I'm familiar with. This is what I'll be showing you. And this is what I can actually help you with if you get stuck. And then we have KiCad for our actual PCB layout and schematics. And KiCad is awesome. You should definitely use KiCad. Uh, there's several others that are also not closed source crap and that are also wonderful. There's Libre PCB and Horizon. Uh, but for those, I don't have a good process yet myself for getting graphics in them. So I work with KiCad mostly. All the boards I showed you before with the uh, two exceptions, which are the most boring ones, were all made with KiCad. And that's what I'm comfortable with using and that's what I can help you with. So this is, this is what we'll be using. So this is our schematic. What we're building is a so-called shitty add-on. If you've been to various hacker events, particularly DEF CON, which is very big on shitty add-ons, but there's a whole lot of event badges from different events that have this four pin or six pin connector where you can just plug in random boards that do stuff. So we're going to be making one of those. And all that we have here is one connector and two resistors and two LEDs. So basically we're connecting this pin to these two resistors. Each of those resistors is connected to the LED and the LED is connected to the ground. And the only thing this will do when you plug it into a compatible badge, those LEDs are going to light up. That's it. This is the simplest possible electronic circuit. Okay. So let's, let's make an actual board. So here's the schematic I was showing you earlier. So let's convert that to a PCB. So here we can go to the view 3D viewer. And here's the PCB now, super, super boring. We can do better than that. So what we're going to do, I, I drew this picture of a cloud. You can see it's a cloud because that says someone else's computer on it. And I want this picture, I want this black stuff that's here, I want to show up in gold on the PCB. So I'm going to put this on the mask layer so that the copper underneath shows up. So I need to put copper underneath, I put, need to put this picture on the mask layer. And another thing I want to do is I want the board to actually have the shape of this cloud. And I want it to be about three centimeters across. 
So I've I've actually scaled this so it's about three centimeters across. So you can you can do the scaling here already, and you you can see the units in here. So that if you're working in inches, you can do that. And here it tells you how wide this thing is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a path that goes around this whole cloud. <coughs> I'm going to use the path tool and I'm just going to click around the whole thing. And this, this is now not the ideal shape. Let me just click around the whole thing. Okay, so now this is now not the ideal shape. Uh, let me just change the color to red so we can see it better. Okay, so I've switched to the Edit Path by Notes tool. And you can see the path now. And you can see, first of all, it's cutting into the shape. And second, it's got sharp inside corners like these. And we can't have those because, as I said, they can't be manufactured. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this path out and round out these corners. So you just drag the handles to adjust the path. You can either drag the path itself or you can drag the, the handles. So here I'm trying to round out this corner a bit. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select the black bit and delete it for a moment. I'm going to save a copy of this in this format. The format is Desktop Cutting Plotter AutoCAD DXF R14. And these are the settings that you want to use. So then I'm going to undo the delete and I'm going to hide this and select this and then export this as a PNG. So I'm going to set this to 300 dpi and you want to remember this value, you're going to need it later. I'm going to save this as cloud.png. Okay, and export. Okay, so now we have a DXF and the PNG. This is great. So now we're going to go to import graphics in KiCad and import our cloud DXF and make sure that it goes on the edge cuts layer. And you can see this is now the right size because we exported the right size. So here we go. And if you hit out tree, you get our 3D viewer and we get a board in the shape we want. This is great. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to convert the PNG into a mask layer. So we're going to go to the main KiCad program and go over here where it says bitmap to component converter. So then we load our bitmap. That's our cloud.png. And it says 300 dpi here, which is exactly what we want. If you export it another resolution, you can change that here. If you want to scale, if you want to make it smaller, you can go 600 here. And you can see the size. Now 300 is fine for us. We're going to use 300. We want it on the solder mask. What we're going to do is we're going to create a folder that's called something.pretty. So let's say cloud.pretty. So we have 
that and we have cloud.gigad module. Here we can go to preferences, manage footprint libraries, and we go project specific libraries and we add an existing library and there we are, cloud.pretty. So let's see, when we press the O button and we click somewhere, and there's our cloud library, and now we have that picture inside our PCB in the mask layer. And you can see the bare PCB surface underneath. That's the fiberglass you can see underneath. Now we actually wanted it in gold, so what we're going to have to do is put some copper underneath. So let's take the Filled Zones tool over here and use that to fill the top layer, front copper layer, with copper that is not connected to anything, so no net, no connection. And we, it doesn't matter what shape this is as long as it covers the whole board. And when you make changes to a zone, when you change anything that's inside one of those filled zones, it's not going to automatically fix itself. It's not going to automatically recalculate the zones. So you need to press the B button for it to recalculate. So for example, if, if I move this connector over here, I press M for move. I'm going to move that over here. Okay. Now you see it didn't actually recalculate the zone. So you press B. Now I want to have some openings in this lightning bolt so I can see underneath. So you can see light coming through from the other side. So let's do that. So I make a keep out area that's going to keep the copper out. So we want copper out. Everything else is fine. On the front layer, we want copper to stay out. Don't worry about the, the warning. This is fine. And now again, this doesn't do anything until you press B to recalculate. Now it recalculates and you can see the fiberglass underneath. So that's cool. So I'm, I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate this. Just right click on that and pick duplicate. You can also do Control D for duplicate or Option D if you're on a Mac. And you can also edit the shape. So press B again to recalculate and here we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our components. So we have these LEDs and we want them behind these lighting bulbs. So I'm going to take this and M for move. M for move, F for flip, R for rotate. So that one goes over there. And here's another one. M for move, F for flip. Now flip puts it on the other side of the board. We flipped it from the front to the back. And then R for rotate. So that goes over here. And then we have these resistors and same thing. F, M. You see those white lines over here? You want those white lines to not cross as much as possible because that will make routing much easier. So we don't want those crossing. So we place this part. You can see now how that's crossed. So we rotate to uncross it and you place the part. Okay, so now we're going to connect those together. This is what it looks like now. Now we're going to connect them together. So we're going to use page down, page up switch between top and bottom layers. So we're working on the bottom layer, that's page down. That's over here as well. And then you press X for connection. So you click where you want to start, you click where you want to end, just follow the white lines here. This is why you don't want the white lines crossing. Because if you have any if you don't have crossing lines this is super easy. Okay, so that's everything connected. That's our electronics bit done and now it looks like this. So you see those traces? They connect the parts together. Now this is a bit annoying. We have this little J1 over there that's sticking out. So escape to get out of connection mode and then M for move over to here. Okay, that's kind of nice. We, we can add a bit of embellishment to it. So let's, let's add some holes. I'm using the VIA tool to add a bunch of holes. 
you want a different size, you can edit the sizes over here. So I'm looking for a kind of pale storm effect here. And then let's let's add some lines as well. So on the front silk screen, you can actually draw right here. You don't need to do this in Inkscape. If you just have some simple graphics, you can just draw lines. So you click to start and you double click to end. And this is what that looks like. You can also add other shapes, you can add some circles, and of course you can move them around. You can move them around with them, or you can change their size if you click on one of them. Yeah, you can, you can adjust the size. So that looks pretty nice. It's still a, the back is still a bit boring. So let's add some more stuff there. I'm going to load some more bitmaps. I got a shade, uh, a snake in here. I want to make it a bit smaller. So you can see the size is going to be over here. So I want, oops, I want that on the silk screen. I want it on the back silk screen, but it only has front silk screen. This is fine. Don't worry about that. We can just flip it. Okay, so we have snake. And then we have a bladder over here. Bladder. Okay. And then we go O again. And there's our snake. It's on the front silk screen now, which is not where we want it. So we're going to take that snake and we're going to flip it. And now it's on the back silk screen. And then you can duplicate it. And then we're going to add some bladders. That's one bladder. That's a second bladder. So there we go, snakes and bladders. So this board is pretty much done at this point. So let's export it for manufacturing, okay? So we're going to call the output directory Cloud Gerbers. We're using the plot tool. And these are the settings that you want, that you want to use. And the reason for these is that these are the settings that are compatible with the largest number of PCB manufacturers. So what we want to do is plot and then generate draw files, generate draw file, generate map file, close, close. And that leaves us with this directory, Cloud Gerbers. And th those are all the files that a PCB manufacturer needs to actually manufacture that board. So we can zip that up and we can, we can send this board to a board manufacturer and they can manufacture it. Okay, so let's let's do a slightly more complex board. We're starting with the same board as before. The only difference I'm going to make at this point, I'm going to set its background color to black. Okay, so this time I want to make a circuit board that looks like my cat. So I'm loading up Krita, which is an absolutely amazing graphics editor, but feel free to use anything else you want. So this, this here is Zoe, that's our cat. And what I want to do is I want to make a circuit board that looks like Zoe. So what I want is I want the shape of the board to be the shape of her face. And I want these yellowy bits over here to be gold on the circuit board. Then I want the eyes, the yellowy bits of the eyes to be the fiberglass color, the beige color on the circuit board and to be translucent so we can backlight them. Okay, for the rest of the board, 
I want these white lines to be in silk screen on black solder mask and the fuzzy bits around the ears we're going to do in half tone. So there's a lot of techniques in here. You don't have to use all of them. This is just an example of like the most advanced things you can do. First thing I'm going to do is exactly as before, I'm going to use a Bezier curve tool over here to make a curve around her face. So we want a very thin line and we want it red because that's a good contrast color. Okay. So we've created a new vector layer. And let's let's call that outline just so that we don't get confused later. So just like before, we're making an outline. So we click around the same way that we did in Inkscape. And again, I don't want any sharp inside corners. And other than that, I want it to follow the shape of the cat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this layer. So I go layer, save vector layer as SVG. And we're going to save that as cat online SVG. And I'm going to go to Inkscape and open that file. So there's a bit weird bit over there. So looking at the size of this, we can see it's 384 millimeters wide, but we actually want it to be around five centimeters wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down until it's about the size I want. So now it's about the right size and I'm going to save a copy that's cat outline of the DXF. So now I can go into my circuit board and import graphics and make sure it's edge cuts. Make sure it goes on layer edge cuts. And now we have a cat. So it's important to actually note this number over here is just over 50 and we're going to need this in a minute. So the next thing we're going to do is, let me just fix this here as well. I'm going to convert the shape to a selection and then I'm going to trim the image to that selection and then invert selection and delete everything, oops, switch to the other layer and delete everything that is not part of that image. Now we don't need the outline anymore, so we can get rid of that. And now we have a cat. Now we want to remove all the bits that are going to be gold and remove all the bits that are going to be fiberglass and then change the rest into a binary image which contains just black and white pixels, nothing else. And then we'll export that and then import it into silk screen and into mask on our PCB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the similar color selection tool and you can adjust its fuzziness over here. So I want to select things that look like this yellow here. So oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Okay, go back to this layer. I want to select things that look like this car. So that's, that's pretty promising already. So I have these areas over here 
and we have those areas over there. And this is a bit fuzzy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather this selection just to smooth it out a bit. Okay, so that's that's a bit smaller. So I'm going to convert the selection to a vector selection. So right now the selection it has transparency. So we don't want that. We want it to be a complete cover. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to convert the selection. So I'm going to convert the selection to a vector selection. That removes those areas entirely. Okay, so before we do that, I want to add to the selection of these areas around the eyes because those are going to be fiberglass. So they need to be removed from the mask as well. So I'm going to add to the selection. I'm going um, and just click around the eyes, selecting areas that I want to add. Also here you can adjust your fuzziness. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to convert to vector selection, and cut that out. So control X to cut and then control V to paste. Now we have a separate layer, which is just this. Okay, we'll get to that layer in a minute. Let's work on this one now. So this layer is now almost black and white. So let's let's select everything. Now what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate. Filter, adjust, desaturate. That takes all the colors out. Next thing I want to do is I want to convert everything that doesn't have high contrast with it. I want to convert it to half tone. So I'm going to use the outline selection tool. And I'm going to start here and select this region which has high contrast features. Okay, that's that. So now I'm going to invert selection and then I'm going to go artistic half tone. That's the effect that gives us. I'm going to set it to five, that's a smaller grain size. And once it's done doing its thing, You can see that we now have this half tone transform on all the lower contrast stuff. Now I'm going to invert selection again, and this area is selected. And over here, I'm going to use a threshold, and that changes the entire region to just black and white. So you set the threshold, you find something that looks nice. That's probably too far. That's too far in the other direction. So we're just trying to find the nice threshold here. Okay, so the image now consists of only two colors, black and white. So what we're going to do next is we're going to fill the entire background with black. So all the transparent areas. So I'm going to use the similar color selection tool on the transparent area and then flood fill and flood fill set to entire selection and set that to black. Okay? So the only white bits we have are where we want our silk screen to be. Okay, then we're going to do a similar thing to this layer. That's our pasted layer. So we're going to use the similar color selection tool with very high fuzziness. basically select everything so everything here is selected and then flood fill that with black
Then we're going to invert selection and flood fill the rest with white. And then we're going to select everything and invert it. So now we have white where we want silk screen. This is a white when we want mask openings and white where we want silk screen. This is great. So now we select just this layer and then export cat face mask. This is our mask layer. And then we do the same for our silk screen layer. That's cat face silk. Now remember the number that we had in Inkscape? That was 50.2. That's what we're going to need now. So we go to our bitmap component converter, then we load our bitmap, cat face silk, and we want this one to be negative. So because our background is black and the foreground is white, we want to flip it around so it's negative. And then here, this would be 384 millimeters wide. So let's set that to something else. We want it to be 50.2, okay? So we adjust that until we get 50.2. Okay, so that's a good number. So remember this 551. Cat dot pretty. That's what we want to call it. And cat silk. Remember that 551? We do the same thing with our mask. Now instead of front silk screen, we're going to set it to front solder mask. And we call it cat mask, okay, cat mode. So we go back to our circuit board, click O, press O, click, and then it's going to load our library. Our library is not there yet, so we need to go to manage footprint libraries, project specific libraries, and add our cat.pretty library. Okay, so there's our cat cat mask and cat silk, that's great. So we put the mask in first. Okay, this is going to take a while. When you're doing 3D rendering with a high complexity graphics element, it takes KiCad a long time to process it. So our highest complexity graphics element is our silk screen because of all that half tone. So we're going to add that last after we've done everything else. Okay. So we have fill zones, none at same as on the last board. That's on our front copper layer. And there we go. So that's that layer. And then over here, we actually want to make an exclusion zone. So we want no copper there. So we're going to do a keep out zone that keeps out the copper pores on the front. Okay, so remove copper pores. I'm going to make uh, an inside circle and an outside circle. So we actually get some copper in between. And the same thing over here. So an inside circle. And an outside circle. Now we're going to place our parts just like before. 
Now, if you want to place a part diagonally, you can do that as well. So you press E for properties, and then you can do stuff like this. Okay, remember to flip them because we want them on the back of the board. So F for flip. And again, try to not cross the white lines. So X for connect. I'm going to route this around so that it doesn't cross the eye area. Okay, that's that's all the circuitry done. And you can see even here, it takes a few seconds for the board to update. Okay, I'm also going to add some mask openings to the back. That's on the B mask layer. I'm drawing a polygon on the B mask layer. Again, I'm making an inner area. And I'm going to copy this with Ctrl D for duplicate. Now we're going to add our silk screen. So again, O and click, cat silk. Okay, this is going to be take a little bit to render, that's fine. So just as a reminder, going back through the steps. So we separated everything that was going to be on the mask layer. So everything that would be gold and everything that would be fiberglass get separated onto its own layer. And then we turn it into a binary image. So black and white. Uh, we also separated the outline and we exported that via Inkscape. For this, we, we selected a region where we use threshold for the silk screen, and we selected another region where we use half tone and then converted it to a black and white image. Okay, this is Zoe. And I think it looks quite a bit like her. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this for manufacturing. Oh yeah, we should probably move that a little. So exporting for manufacture. We go to plot, select this option, deselect this option, deselect this option. We set the output directory to whatever we want to call it, and then plot, and then generate drill files, drill file, map file, close, close. Now we have everything we need to manufacture this board. That's nine megabytes, which is huge for a gerber file. Okay, so compress that. And here we are. This is now something you can send to a manufacturer for manufacturer. So the last thing I want to show you is how to order some boards. This is an XPCB. I'll show you a few different manufacturers. So here are 
Gerber files that we generated earlier. And we want to select Enig. Okay, that's loaded, yeah. So we want to select Enig and we want black solder mask and it tells you the price and your shipping cost. Very similarly with PCBWay. So again, we can go here and get our Gerbers. And we want to change it to Immersion Gold, that's Enig, and Black. Then we have Eisler. Eisler and Oshpark are nice because they can you can actually upload KiCat files directly. So you can open the KiCat.pcb file, make sure you save it first. And here you just need to be careful with Eisler uh, if you want Enig. If you want any, you have to make sure you select this HD option and they only do green. And they have this lovely preview here so you can actually see where all the milling paths will go. Okay, then we have Oshpark. Oshpark also takes ECAT files. So let's, let's try it with the cat this time. And it takes a while for them to process because it's a graphically very complicated PCB because of the half tone. So we let it process. And there it is. They, they only do purple. So you can't choose colors here. That's not quite true. They also have a funky transparent solder mask option, but that's that's all the colors they have. Okay, so that's that's how you get boards.